Greetings everyone, my name is Dominic and today you're tuning in to the Comic Book Report, where we review comic books and graphic novels so you can get an idea of what to read. Today we're going into the field though and doing a little bit of a different kind of video today. I actually had the opportunity to go to a, I'm going to call it a small scale comic convention, a comic con, but really it was sort of a comic event. There's this uh, kind of vendor space called Ninja Exchange. It's a collectible expo in one of my local malls and I heard that Jim Lee was going to be there along with other comic book people like David Mack for example and I wanted to go over and try to meet some of my comic book heroes. Can't wait to talk about it, but before we dive in, just a reminder of the channel sponsor, OrganicPriceBooks.com. To pick up your own comic book collected editions, check out their website. There's a link in the video description. If you find any comics you like, you can use my discount code at checkout, the comic book report, to save $2. Please note if you use my link or code to make a purchase, I will earn a small commission, but it's a great way to support the channel. Thanks for considering. Now off to the con. So this space is really hard to describe for people that don't come here, but it's like one part comic convention kind of vendor booth kind of setup. It almost feels like a swap meet that's a little bit bit more put together. I think if you've been to a comic convention space or at sometimes at local fairs, they have kind of those infomercial vendors that kind of sell their wares, things like that. That's what this space really feels like. We have a lot of collectibles, trading card games, comics, slabs. Uh, we have cool like anime backpacks. We have old toys. We have so many, again, kind of collectibles, uh, things like that. Uh, I've had the opportunity to walk through this space once or twice since it was put in in the last year within this mall. And honestly, it's really great. I honestly should probably do a video just covering this space uh, in a future video. If you would like to see that, let me know. Uh, but let me tell you something. This event they had celebrating the anniversary uh, was definitely a lot more packed out than I've seen it normally. There was lines wrapped all the way around to meet Jim Lee and definitely some lines for some of these other figures there. I know that there were other people like David Mack, who I'll show in this video as well. And also, I think the drummer for System of a Down, who's also into comic books, I didn't have an opportunity to meet him but he was there as well along with a few others anyway it was a great way to meet other like-minded comic collectors like myself i had a fun time just kind of befriending a few people in line especially while i was waiting to meet jim lee you can see my place in line here, and this is when I got there half an hour before the signing started, and I was probably in line for a total of about two and a half hours. God bless my wife, who kind of oversaw our kids while I was standing in line to meet one of my comic book heroes. Now, I did buy ahead of time a ticket to get a picture with Jim Lee and a signature from David Mack. I wanted a signature from Jim Lee, but I, it wasn't in my budget, frankly, and I was excited to get the picture, which I will show later. I also picked up a comic book from David Mack, which I'll show toward the end of this video so never fear there will be a bit of a comic book review at the end of this or just a brief overview of what I picked up uh, but this is the convention space I was laughing they even sold tamales from some of the booths for people waiting in line I know the event itself had sold some refreshments some snacks some sodas for people that waited as well we had some people that were trying to sell just kind of basic issues from Jim Lee throughout his career if people needed it signed anywhere uh, but I was content with my picture for the time being and like I said I had a really fun time at this event even though a large portion of it I was standing in line it was a really fun just crowd like I said everyone I met was very very friendly here and it was just a really good time I haven't met a ton of comic creators in the past yet uh, but I look forward to more opportunities to do so I know I talked about meeting uh, Colin Kelly and Jackson Lansing at a local comic shop when I had them sign my Batman Beyond Neo year uh, but this is really my first comic uh, creators I've met since then and it was really a pleasure to meet Jim Lee and actually talk to David Mack for a bit David David Mack was a comic book writer and illustrator I was familiar with from the pages of Daredevil. I know he's one of the co-creators of Echo, for example. Uh, so I was really elated to meet him, uh, and he was really generous with his time. I talked to him for maybe 10 minutes, picked up a book from him. Jim Lee was a little bit quicker, but wow, was that guy really giving as well. He had a line that I'm sure kept him there all day, but he was gracious, and like I said, just really, really stand-up guy from what I met. I'm giving you a look at one of the booths off to the side of the Jim Lee line. There were sometimes little bit trickles of uh, people standing in line to meet some of these other comic book creators, but they were just really great. I will focus a little bit on David Mack, as that was probably the comic creator I spent the most amount of time with that day, uh, actually by a long shot. Like I said, I maybe got 10 minutes of his time personally just to talk. I got to flip through some of his original art, some of his prints. I wish I would have bought one of the prints, honestly, in hindsight, but I was really happy with the comic collected edition he recommended 
recommended that I picked up. Uh, he also pointed me towards his Instagram and just some of the other things he has going on. I was really fascinated to hear him talk about his time writing Daredevil. Uh, he mentioned that he actually helped Brian Michael Bendis get his job on Daredevil, which is amazing to hear as Bendis's run on Daredevil is my favorite comic book superhero run of all time. And to hear that David Mack was instrumental in getting Bendis that gig, well, frankly, it just made me a little bit in awe of David Mack. I was also thinking of Mac recently as he was one of the co-creators of the character Echo along with Joe Quesada who did the art for that uh, volume that introduced that character. And I know Echo's getting her own Disney Plus series later this year so I'm probably going to be reviewing some of those early issues introducing Echo later on this channel. Anyway, I thought it'd be a great time to get a signed book from him so I brought my uh, Daredevil Parts of a Whole that introduced Echo for him to sign. Had a great conversation about that. He was excited I picked up the collected edition. We talked about, about that in Daredevil devil which was of course one of my favorite subjects and then he told me a little bit about his time at the state department and how he was working with bendis on a more independent series called cover i ended up picking up this first volume in trade paperback and i have really enjoyed it so far if you're interested i might try to do a review for this volume on my channel as well uh one because i have it two because it's interesting and three because again david mack was so cool i'd love to just spend some time reviewing some of his stuff after my meet and greet with David Mack, getting everything signed, I was able to get right back in line for Jim Lee. Like I said, it was a bit of a process, but I met some cool people in line, and frankly, it was still worth my time. This is actually the number one person in the comic book industry I had hoped to meet one day. I think when I think about comic book writers, I have so many favorites, it's hard for me to narrow it down. With comic book artists, I certainly have a lot I love, but Jim Lee has always been standalone as my favorite. So this was probably the number one figure I hoped to meet, and I cannot believe he was at a local mall. Again, great, generous of his time, tireless as far as how much he was working to just kind of help uh, have these interactions with his fans, and I couldn't believe I got a picture with him. So, so cool. I just wanted to share it with all of you. This was a really, really big day for me. I was so thankful for this opportunity, thankful for my wife again for helping out with the kids so I could do this, and just, yeah, I was smiling all day thinking about it. And anyway, that's really all my content from that event itself at that small convention center space. Uh, now I want to transition to show what I picked up or what I got signed, just to show you, again, a little bit of a comic book overview. If you want a more detailed tour of that vendor space, let me know. Maybe I can go back there and treat it kind of like a comic book, like LCS tour or something. Anyway, let me know in the comments. Uh, but now we're going to go ahead and take a look at what I picked up. Of course, like I said, I got the paperback edition for cover, and I got a signature in my Daredevil Parts of a Whole. Uh, these are both really fun stories. I'm still making my way through cover, but I am enjoying it thus far. Again, in the comments, let me know if you'd like to see a review on either of these titles. I'm kind of planning to still do it anyway in the upcoming weeks, uh, but let me know. I'd like to see if there's interest, and I'll kind of go from there. Didn't pick up a lot of secondary artwork. I spent most of my money on the picture with Jim Lee, the signature from David Mack, and then picking up cover, which he signed for free with purchase. Uh, but it was great, again, to meet these people. Uh, but let's take a look at these books. Let's see the signatures. Let me talk a little bit about it. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and wrap up the video. So first we'll take a look at Daredevil Parts of a Whole. Uh, this takes place after the Kevin Smith, Joe Quesada era with Guardian Devil, and it's really the introduction of the character of Echo. We have David Mack on writing and Joe Quesada on artwork, uh, so we have some visual continuity from that Kevin Smith run. And honestly, this is a really great book. This introduces us to the character of Echo, her abilities, her kind of uh, interactions with Daredevil. It's also a great kingpin book for Marvel fans of that character. Again, I was interested in getting this signed. One, because Echo, that series is coming out, and David Mack, one of the creators of Echo, was right here. I was really torn. I almost brought my Daredevil Vision Quest hardcover edition for him to sign because David Mack does, I believe, writing and artwork on that, and he has a really beautiful kind of painted style you saw in those samples earlier in the video. I would have loved to have him sign something that he illustrated uh, more substantially, um, but I couldn't stop and not get the signature for that first appearance of Echo in this collection. Uh, admittedly, my paperback is a bit beat up, but it was really fun to get this signed, to whip it back out, and I'm really eager to dive back into this story to hopefully review uh, before that series comes out. There's that David Mack signature across Daredevil's face. Love seeing that. If I didn't mention it, this is part of the Marvel Knights era in Marvel Comics history. It's an era that's a little bit more violent, gritty, adult-oriented, and honestly, it hates for some pretty good storytelling, especially in the Daredevil world, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, diving in briefly to just take a look at this book, again, the art in here is from Joe Quesada, and frankly, this is some of my 
favorite Casada artwork. I'm kind of hit or miss with him as an artist, but he has such a distinctive style, and I really love what he brought to the table here for parts of a whole. Uh, the character of Echo is also really interesting. She is a, I believe, Native American woman who is also a uh, deaf woman who has this ability to perfectly mimic things uh, so she's like really prolific in combat dance piano all sorts of things like that and she becomes kind of a anti-hero villain to hero kind of character she was sort of raised as a goddaughter by the kingpin and we have sort of all of the mechanics of that origin into this daredevil story we have her um character outside of her uh kind of alter ego uh befriending matt murdoch and kind of having a bit of a romance uh before some ultimate met uh conflicts fights things like that it's a really great story i can't wait to review it now that i'm actually looking through this and just thinking about it again uh but we have some fantastic artwork from joe casada again still during that marvel knights era so we have some gritty more adult centric storytelling and david mack really brought a lot to the table here i would have been really interested to see this story illustrated by him as well i think it would have just a totally different vibe uh but i think this team this matchup of david mack and joe casada was actually really just a winner here uh so excited to get this signed and I'll have to talk about it more in the future. And now to round out this video, let's go ahead and start talking about cover. So here's the first volume of cover from Dark Horse Comics. It was created by Brian Michael Bendis and David Mack with digital coloring from Zoo or Zoo and letters by Carlos M. Mangual. So this is a really interesting series that was based on events from uh, David Mack's time with the State Department. I don't really know what that means as far as based on, but there does seem to be some meta narrative here where the main character is actually a comic book creator who gets kind of taken into the CIA in a kind of odd way. Uh, I cannot really describe this book to you easily. I'm looking forward to reviewing it in full extent uh, once I finish it, but I have read the first issue or two in this collection, and it's pretty fascinating. I think the art is pretty interesting, and I just, I've really never read a comic quite like this. I think to have comic book creators kind of brought into the world of the CIA, it was just a really novel concept, and I think that honestly the approach was kind of refreshing, and it was something different from my reading library I hadn't really experienced before. The characters were really immersive in a kind of quirky way, and the whole feel of this felt straight-laced, but also clandestine and kind of surreal. I can tell it's like kind of leaning into the spy genre, but it also just has this slow burn quality where I feel like I'm supposed to just be more with the kind of small character movements here, uh, and it really just sells it. It really works. I'm a huge fan of Bendis in general as well. I think he really nails this kind of uh, grittier kind of crime aspect of fiction, and I think pairing him with David Mac and doing kind of a spy thriller kind of series was definitely a masterstroke. It's a really interesting book so far. Like I said, I haven't read anything really like it, uh, and I'm looking forward to finishing it in its entirety. This is a volume one, as I saw in the cover and on the spine, I believe, uh, so I am curious to see where this ends and what happens next. Uh, David Mack was really interested in kind of promoting this book. He had some copies to sell at the table, and of course, I'm a sucker for a good collected edition, and I don't have much at all from Dark Horse, so this was a great foray into that, even if it is just a trade paperback. I'll flip through just a few more pages here so you can get, again, a little bit of a feeling, uh, initial overview for this book. Let me know again in the comments if you're interested in this. Uh, but I thought I'd just share this with you all. It was kind of a different video for me on this channel. I would put this under kind of tour video, uh, kind of loose Comic-Con footage, but I just thought this was a really great experience. I love getting to meet these comic creators, picking up some new content, and just enjoying my time. And I thought I'd share it with all of you. Let me know what you think of the video in the comments, and just thank you so much for watching. Until next time, this has been the Comic Book Report. Please don't forget to give this video a like and maybe check out one of my others on your way out. Until next time, have a good one.